Good morning everybody and welcome back to another film. Today you join me in deepest, darkest Suffolk once again and in a woodland that I've been to once before. But I just wanted to fill you in on the backstory to today because it's very typical of what happens and uh, I'm sure you can all relate to it. So yesterday I saw some early fungi that was enough to make me think I've got to go to a woodland and just try and catch some of those early species that you don't normally see later on in the season. I got up ridiculously early really for this sort of shoot but I was up anyway, I was awake so I thought I'd get out and, and head off and get myself a drink once I got to location but when I got out into the garden it was really apparent very quickly that an amazing sky was about to go off and I hadn't really got enough time to get to a location that I knew would work. So I headed for the nearest location that I could find, a um, coastal location. And it was a spot that I've been to only once. I really don't know well at all. I got there as quickly as I can. The sky was just amazing. And I'm sure as you watch this, there'll be many of you sitting there thinking, I know exactly what day that was. Now, just so you know, it's the 4th of September. If you want to look back through your raw files and the dates, and maybe you'll say, yep, yeah, I knew that sky. I remember it well but um, I got to the location and it was amazing it really was I've got a little picture on my phone which I'll put up now of uh, the situation I was in I was stood in a car park I had nothing to shoot and uh, just had to watch it from the comfort of the car park but uh, that's photography that's the way it goes sometimes but um, from there uh, I headed back to this woodland location but went along a different route and on that route the heather was amazing as well now it is heather season it's uh, beginning of September and from there I went to <laughs> another location called Dunwich Heath now that's um, a National Trust place and I'm a National Trust member car park member and so I dashed over to there thinking well at least if I don't catch the pre-dawn light I can get the sun as it's rising on the lovely um, heather clad landscape over there and there's some um, I think the lighthouse cottages or fishermen's cottages and <clears throat> you've got some lovely heather leading in the foreground up to those in the distance but when I got there so the sun at this point in time was beautiful and golden it was just kissing the horizon got to the entrance and that was saying bye um, you could only enter if you if you pre-arranged your visit and there's bollards at the front and I couldn't get in <laughs> so licking my wounds back I went and this is where I am now I'm back to the woodland plan A which is where I plan to start my day in the first place so there you go now I will say right here right now is that I've walked probably two or three hundred yards into the woodland and I haven't yet seen a single uh, piece of evidence to suggest that there's any fungi to shoot so it might have just been a little local flush and I could have got this all wrong from start to finish so I've been walking for about 10 or 15 minutes and I haven't seen any fungi whatsoever the little patch of woodland that I'm in at the moment has got a good mix of trees in the canopy you've got certainly oak there lots of beech birch and uh, behind me over there there's even pine and there's a good understory of holly so a good mix of trees and shrubs and if you're going to find fungi anywhere you're probably going to find it here certainly under beech woodland under beech trees you find one particular type called amethyst deceiver and as the name suggests it's got a lovely purple color to it but having looked around this little spot here there's none whatsoever so I think if I'm going to find any fungi this morning it's going to be very very random and the odd one if at all so I think it's time to try and be a little bit creative think outside the box and just see what I can find
So <laughs> I've not placed it there, honestly. Where is it? There we go. Little sycamore. I can't find it. Where is it? There we go. Little sycamore leaf. Just um, landed. I've got a sycamore in the canopy above and generally just pine trees, just um, plantation woodland all around me. I haven't placed that there at all, just to prove that. You've got lots of other individual ones just dotted around. But this one drew my attention immediately because it's, it is separated, it is on its own, and it makes for a, a nice contrast that we always talk about with the pine needles. It's not a fantastic shot, but at least it gets the film off to a start and it's something. So I'm going to get the camera out, line it up, and, uh, and take that for my first image. So those of you that watched my last video for the love of ferns, you'll know that I'm really fond of a good fern photograph. But I just wanted to point out the key difference between regular ferns and bracken. For all intents and purposes, they're all ferns, but there is a key difference. And I know that sometimes people get mixed up between the two. Some strange noises in this woodland. Um, so for all intents and purposes, this woodland to the untrained eye would appear to be filled with ferns. And in this instance, it is bracken. But if you get your eye and you look a bit closer, there's regular ferns in amongst it. I'll show you bracken first, so you can see the difference. So here we've got a piece of bracken. Hopefully you can see that there. So where it comes up from the ground, you've got what's called a stipe or a stem. Now this is the important thing to remember is that bracken branches. So from there, you've got these big old branches that are carrying these big leaf blades on. And then go up a bit further it does it again it separates they're always opposite the the um the stems with the hold the leaf blade so opposite pairs bracken branches so this next one is a regular fern or fern in this instance it would appear to be a little buckler fern so here we've got a stipe or stem coming up from the ground and then we've got these little what's called pinnae attached to the main stem but the whole thing is the leaf blade that goes into the ground so there's no branching these little pinnae that come off look like branches but they're not they're actually um, the small leaves that come off the central rib so you've got the pinnae and then you've got the pinules that come out from that but these little sections that come out here are not branches whereas if you look on the bracken much bigger much more robust um, plant got these definite branches that come out from the side holding these big leaf blades so that's how you remember the key difference bracken branches whereas regular ferns don't as i made my way through the woodland i suddenly became aware that i was focusing more attention on the weight of my camera bag than i was on any potential photographic opportunities that i may be passing by so with that in mind i decided to sit for a little while take 10 minutes out just regroup before heading back out to continue the search. So I've found some fungi and here we have what looks like Mycena inclinata. I'm going to guess inclinata but it's certainly a Mycena species. Lovely group. Now what I will say when you're photographing fungi and there's a good example of it here is that always look for the best specimens that you can find fungi generally doesn't last very long it soon dries out dies uh, goes pale in color loses all its coloration or the slugs get to it and nibble holes in it and now i know that's all natural part of the process of of growing and dying off but for a photograph i always look for the best quality i can find as you can see at the bottom of this group here you've got lots of yellowing dying off and they've got broken and snapped and generally not in good condition but the later flush which have come probably two or three days after the bottom um, group have, have grown in perfect condition and it's those that i'm going to focus my attention on. i'm probably going to do a close-up um, of this section this middle section here and probably do a focus stack around about f11 and focus through the different stages of the um, the image from front to back to get complete sharpness throughout i think that's going to make a really nice shot so the camera's in its position 
ready for taking. I've actually took the shot, but just quickly to talk you through the setup. I'm really zoomed in close and it, and it literally is about a matchbox, small matchbox size um, that I'm focusing on. I remember the old little tiny matchboxes set that weren't much bigger than a, a 35mm um, slide. It's roughly about that, so I'd say one to one on a full frame camera. I carry this sheet around in my bag all the time to diffuse the light. Um, now today the light is actually quite diffused anyway, but typically with mushrooms because of the way they grow they're like little lanterns they always cast shadows underneath them so i have one of these manfrotto lights um, that I, I sometimes use not a lot but what i've done today because even with the with the little diffuse screen on the front it was still a little bit harsh so with this sheet that i carry around i've actually doubled it doubled it up and i've used it just to light the underside of the caps and it really helps just to throw that little bit of light and bring it all to life. Without that, those deep shadows are a little bit unappealing and I personally don't like it. So I'll put the image on now. It's a stack of, about, I'd say, about eight or nine images, so quite a lot to blend together, but it definitely needed it because the front edge, and when you look through the gaps underneath, through the stems or stipes, as they call them, um, there's quite a bit of depth to the whole image. So. It took that many to get front to back sharpness, so I'll put that on now. So the light at the minute has got quite harsh, there's a lot of clear sky above me and not a lot of cloud so I really need to make sure that I stick within the canopy as much as possible so that I don't get those harsh uh, highlights and shadows. I've tried one or two compositions in the last hour or so but they haven't really worked however just a minute ago I found a little cluster of heather by the footpath that was really quite nice when I put the macro lens on. There's a problem with it in that there was a lot of grass stems and twigs and other bits of vegetation growing in amongst it that I couldn't uh, move effectively without damaging the plant. So I'm going to head to the van, grab myself a quick drink, and then I'm going to head back out to another location where I know there's a lot more heather next to a woodland. So I'll see you in a second. So I've moved about a quarter of a mile from where you last saw me, and I've come to the opposite end of the woodland where it opens out to this beautiful heathland cloaked in heather, absolutely gorgeous. My shot should be well and truly achievable here. Now the reason I didn't come here this morning is because I didn't have the atmospheric conditions that I really wanted to shoot here. There's some lovely silver birches in the distance which will make for some great um, subject matter on another occasion. So I've got the spot in mind and I just wanted to point out the fact that when you're doing things like this, in habitats like this, you've got to be really mindful of what animals might lay in wait when you get in there. And some of you will know where I'm going with this, and that's the fact that there might be adders in the, uh, in the tall vegetation. If you look at the footpath just behind me, it obviously runs both directions. Either sides of the footpath are ideal places for adders to, uh, to bask. And the reason for that is because when the sun's out, the heather gives them a good bit of shelter from the wind, but they can get the nice heat from the sun that they want when they want to bask and warm up before they go hunting. So I've been into this little spot here behind me to check it out to make sure that it's clear of any, uh, any certainly adders and other reptiles before I go in to try and get my composition. So just bear that in mind if you come to places like this, you're not the only one lying down in the grass. Fantastic. So it took a while. I think I've got what I wanted. I spent quite a bit of time with the camera freehand, moving it in and out of the heather, pushing the lens in amongst um, the heather. What I'm trying to achieve is a single flower spike with lots and lots of out of focus purple colour around it, with that spike just separated from all the rest. For that, I've used F4. Um, it's not the best aperture 
to get sharpness throughout. So what I'm doing, what I've actually just done was I took two images. The flower spike is at a slight angle towards the camera, so I took a quick one at the top of the, the top part of the flower, and then once I got that, I recomposed and took the bottom part of the flower and I'll merge those two together in Photoshop. It's been a little bit difficult because typically the sun's out a lot of the time and it's nice and still but the minute the sun goes in the wind seems to pick up but like you've just seen I managed to get um, the two shots there so I'll merge those two together in Photoshop to create a single image so I shall put that on now. So I'm not sure what I thought of that image. It's difficult to appreciate it in the sunshine on the back of the screen there. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of the image along with the other images taken today. It's been quite a varied day. Started off in the shady woodland and ended up in the sunshine on the heath. So as always, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. Ring the bell for those all important notifications so every time a new video is uploaded you get told and give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching. Bye for now.